Hi, I'm Jacob Moran, and I want to welcome you to this introduction to virtualization. Maybe like me, you got introduced to some virtualization when you strapped on a pair of those sweet virtualization goggles and was transported to a whole new place that looked like it was right in front of your eyes, even though if you reached out your hands, there was nothing there. In the world of IT, virtualization is not that different. We're creating things that can be connected to, that users can see and work with and, and use, but they're not really there per se. They're an abstraction. All right, I know, I know. I get a little excited about virtualization. So let, let's just talk for a moment about what you might expect as a virtualization admin. One great way to learn about any career is to job shadow someone, to, to follow along throughout the day and see what they do. What might we expect someone who is a virtualization admin to be doing? Well, they're going to be doing a lot of work with software because virtualization is really all about software pretending to be hardware. We could go to a major vendor and buy a computer chassis, right? A box that has memory and CPU and network cards installed in it and a video card installed in it. And it's got a hard drive to store the files. And the most common element of virtualization that we create is something called a virtual machine. And you know what a virtual machine is? It's just a virtual chassis. It's a file that says, imagine a computer and imagine it had two gigs of memory. Imagine a computer and imagine it had four processors running at two gigahertz each. Imagine I had a network card plugged into this switch. So the virtual machine is a box. And so part of being a virtualization admin is creating these boxes and defining their boundaries. And then just like with a physical computer, what do you do after you get the chassis? Well, you got to install an operating system and, an a and install the applications and, and do all the work that it takes to get a computer really up and running. And that work that it takes to uh, finish up a computer is the same work we're going to have to do to finish up a virtual machine. But there's other elements where software is pretending to be hardware as well. What do we connect computers to in order for them to communicate with other computers? We're going to plug them into switches, which are devices that allow for local communication. And those switches will be usually connected to routers, which will allow for remote communication. And wouldn't you know it, in the world of virtualization, we're going to see virtual switches and virtual routers. And let's not forget firewalls because they exist in the physical world, and yes, they sure do exist in the virtual world as well. So all of these network devices are going to be there to support networking the virtual machines locally, remotely, and with the filtering effects that firewalls have to block traffic that shouldn't get in and allow traffic that should. In a computer, where do you put your stuff? Well, you put it in either local or remote storage. And wouldn't you know it? In the world of virtualization, one of the things we can create is virtual storage arrays. So going back to that job of virtualization admin, what's going to be their job? Well, to create all of those virtual machines, to configure those virtual machines so that they make sense, they work, and then to connect those virtual machines with each other. And that means building out the infrastructure of virtual switches, routers, and firewalls to network the virtual machines together correctly and saving the files of those virtual machines in such a way that they are portable and redundant and available by creating virtual storage. But of course, all this software has to run on some hardware somewhere, right? So one piece of hardware that does play into our virtualization world is the virtualization host. The virtualization host or hosts are going to be the boxes that use their memory and their processor to support running the software of multiple virtual machines, each with their own operating system on the same platform. One box running multiple operating systems separated out. So there will be hardware we purchase. We'll install the virtualization host software onto those hosts, configure them, configure them to work as a group so that they can support each other as a group. And then it, it is really here that all of this work is being done. Now you might be wondering, wait, who's, who's asking for these virtual machines anyway? Well, typically in a company, whenever there are demands for new servers, and in some cases even for new desktops, that's going to drive the creation of virtual machines. And because it's so cheap and easy to create virtual machines, typically that may mean every time that there is a new application 
that needs to be run by a particular server. Maybe it's a, a mail application instead of a web application or a database application. Instead of dogpiling lots of applications onto one big hefty computer, we're going to run a bunch of individual virtual machines to give us flexibility and versatility when it comes to executing this. It is an ongoing process to keep up with the demand for virtual machines, and that's why, regardless of your goal, you need to develop a strong learner habit and prepare yourself to become a lifelong learner.